Hello, and welcome to Bong Table. I'm Mass, and it's another Conquest Battle Report. Today, I am, once again, for the third time in the row, because I really, 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 really want to get off the smite bomb, Ben's Hedgehog list from Competent Conquest. Uh, I've talked about this list a bunch. I'm probably just gonna, like, you know, speedrun it, because that's kind of the... Uh, there's only so much to say about a list over and over again, and you know, it's kind of like, okay, I get the fundamental ideas, I understand what's going on, my play was getting better, um, so yeah, it, it's, it's good, I like it. Um, my opponent is playing Nords, they're playing a bit of an MSU spam, they got one big brick of Valks, and then I believe everything else is an MSU, and then a Mountain Jotnar running around, uh, so it's a lot of activations versus the triple brick list of Hedgehog. So let's get into it. Here's Hedgehog. Uh, we got to start Noble Lord, Warlord, Best of Men. Um, I actually started to get Best of Men off on like th all three of my bricks this game. What I was really happy about. Um, it's just also when it is happening, I gotta like make sure and check because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, uh, what is it? I would like roll and I'm like, oh yeah, I reroll sixes on the clash and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do that and I'm like. Well, the sixes are right there, so I just picked them up and rolled them anyway, because I just kind of put the dice that were um, misses, and my opponent's like, yeah, whatever. So that was really good. But just checking that bubble, I still don't like the the shortness of it, but when it works, it works, and it's kind of funny, because you only just you just need to touch the tip. <laughs> and I'll leave that one at that. So, you know, coming around on Best of Men, still liking it, but still have my problems. Regale the Empire, always inspire, can't be broken, any big ass unit of Household Guard, there's the big ass unit of Household Guard, Arms Master, they're going up to Clash 4, reroll 6s, uh, no matter what. Really nice because you can like, um, get stuck into an engagement, Clash, kill off your opponent, and then you're like, well I got another action left, it's like, well I could charge again into someone else, you could march to get more board positioning, really nice, like it a lot. Two, two units? No, one unit. Yeah, one unit of crossbows and then two MSUs of House of Knights with banners. Those House of Knights are really there just to run up and protect the flanks of the uh, bricks. Because it's, they gotta, gotta keep your bricks safe. That's really their old job. You put a men at arms on a horse and you now have a household knight. <laughs> Next we got an Imperial Officer. He's got Tack 1, Brace for Impact on your feet, Double Time, and Bastion. He's also a Warlord for that rapid deployment. Everyone except for those two units of House of Knights is infantry. Gotta get those boys up the table. You're vanguarding. He's running two units of her crossbows and a militia bowmen. Militia bowmen are chaff, they die. Like, sometimes you shoot with them because you're like, yeah, might as well, but like, don't don't be threatened by militia bowmen. Uh, then he's got another big ass brick of Guild Legion, Standard Bear Drill Master, so they're all getting five attacks, seven stands, so there's a big clump of those guys, they're gonna have basically resolve five until they die, um, Bastion up to defense four, really nice, so they're a really good, strong, tanky formation, as well as having support three from the Relentless Drills, so all the bricks have, uh, Relentless Drills. Lastly, uh, Theus Priest, Elysium Fragment for that Smite Bomb, Focused, Arcane One, Priest Six, Reroll Two Fails, really nice however i'm terrible at magic for some reason my dice hate me <laughs> i might i might show some pictures at the end when i'm doing the end game chat and you could just see like my dice rolls where i'm like this is my merc crossbow shots and it's like 10 shots two hits and i'm like it can't fucking me um because there was a moment where i'm like okay priest you know like roll a bunch of dice and it's like you just need two successes and it's like you failed all six re-roll two of them oh you still fail i'm like god damn it so yeah, I I think I'm just cursed. Like, don't don't do magic is what I'm I'm learning, and it's just like, oh man. So then we got uh, militia. Uh, what do I gotta say about the guys? Serv servite, servite. I believe it's a servite. Makes them march six. Also gives us the character who's in the regiment. Makes them resolve three. Really nice, really speedy boys. Um, you kind of want to keep your militia as safe as possible so that you can kind of keep your Theus Priest going and have that Smite Bomb available. You kind of run them beside the uh, Household Guard to get that Best of Men bubble on them because they really like rerolling sixes on their Clash. Uh, they also really like rerolling sixes on their defense rolls because they're only defense. Uh, one plus shield, so two. You can Theus Priest buff them to like three. So you kind of you can kind of get there, um, make them the same defensibility as household guard, but yeah, they're they kind of just fall apart really quickly, and you kind of want to keep them safe. Um, 
that's really it for the list. I'm not gonna go too heavily into it and the theory. Um, there's a video where I have a hedgehog with a bunch of pikes as the thumbnail. I believe that one I spent 23 minutes breaking down the list in greater detail. Um, I think it's Battle Report 36, so have a look at that one. So I'm just gonna slow move my rules and you know, we'll get on with our day. Pause the video at any time if you want to read something. And there we go. Let's go look at my opponent's Nords list. Here's my opponent's Nords list. They called it Nordvelk. Sweet. Their Warlord is the Jarl, who has the surprise attack. I don't believe my opponent ever gone to any... Sorry. They got into my flank once with a bunch of impact attacks from some Uger, and then I stabbed them to death because I wasn't going to deal with that shit. Um, it's the most polite way to do, like to say it, because I didn't really want to get like cleave 2, and I was like, yeah, these things need to die. And I was just like, confirm the kill, just keep confirming kills. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, start with the Blooded, and you know, we'll get to the Yarl, but I just want to say who the Warlord was, because it's not, you know, the first guy. So, Blooded Warband. He's got Dragon, Hunter's Instinct. I believe Dragon gives him one more attack, or I might be a higher clash. It's either or. I'm not really too concerned. He's got his gun, you know, Barrage 3, range 16. He's also got Hunter's Instinct, so that he is, uh, what can I say? He's got Fire in Advance for his unit of Stalkers that he's going to be in. Stalker is really good. You're Volley 3, you're Barrage 3 with range 16, but because you're also movement six, you can like maneuver a lot and you can kind of shoot up what's really nice. Like uh, Merc crossbows aren't, they're a good shooter. They're just, they're not quality shooting, they're quantity shooting. <laughs> and so um, I just find stalkers are like, because we're barrage story, we just shoot a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, uh. um, another big one about stalkers is that evasion two really keeps them alive against a lot of stuff that you think would just like end up killing them. And it, you know, they just stick around a little longer because of that evasion. Then he's got unit trolls, MSU. Uh, my opponent today is Ka Cassandra, and she was talking with Ben and Carl, and Ben was like, "Hey, I'm gonna tell you all about the secret Nords tech." And it was like, "Trolls go hunt down range regiments. Um, they can take the plink damage because they got Regen six, and they have six wounds, so they're gonna be healing a stand every turn. It's really nice. So it's gonna take a lot of shooting to bring down a unit of trolls, and your MSU because." You know, you got five attacks each, um, the Inspire three, Cleave one, with that regen, you'll just get stuck in with a range unit, and you'll just kind of kill them and then go on to the next one. So Trolls, really good. Um, trolls seem to be the MSU killer, what's really nice. Um, I know Nords players were kind of down a bit about them. However, after being beat on them by Ben in a TTS game we played, I believe that's Battle Report 37, and then this game. Yeah, Trolls are really good. <laughs> <laughs> hate him. So we'll go to the next unit that I also hate. Uh, Bocho. Also really good. Range 14, Barrage 5, Volley 3, uh, Precision Shot for that Smite on 1s. Very good with Volley, or yeah, Volley 3. Bochosen can easily just like march, shoot, shoot back up. Their movement 6. Like they get a lot of threat and they can accurately hit things with that Volley 3. Um, also being Barrage 5, if you got a good roll, you're just getting more hits than a lot of other things. A lot of, like, uh, as a Hundred Kings player, everything's Barrage 3, and it's like, oh man, I really would love the number not to be 3. Watch, watch it get nerfed down to Volley 2, or yeah, Barrage 2, and I'll be like, oh, what did I, what happened? Monkey, monkey claw, another finger curls. <laughs> but, Bow Chosen, still really strong. The five wounds on them really makes them uh, durable because they, they can have that exchange of shooting and still have a stand. Like, I found Merc Crossbows usually kill, like, one stand per turn with two units into one, and because Bow Chosen are wound five, they'll still have that stand. They'll still get that shooting out. Barrage five, really good. If you roll well with the ones, you'll get a bunch of uh, smite hits, and it's just really good. Them going down to Evasion 1 kind of gives you a bit of a chance instead of being Evasion 2. But Bow Chosen, still really strong. Norris players, still play them. Like, run them up, get some shooting, back up, let your other stuff get in the way, get those fights going. Bow Chosen just kind of walk up and shoot in the side, and then they can get into a nice spot and just, you know, take aim to 4 and shoot and get into effect. Like, it's just mean. Uh, lastly, we've got a unit of Fenris Beast Pack. Another unit, really good. Um, the speed 7 medium, 
They got that fluid reform, uh, not fluid reform, fluid formation gives them the reform. They are opportunists, loose formation is fantastic on them. I learned uh, during this battle that loose formation also affects spells, so my holy fire would hit 8 times, actually only hit 4, and I only killed 1 stand instead of maybe 2 and broke them. Like, very good. Uh, 6 attacks, if you can get in the flank with opportunists, going to clash 3, re-rolling everything, super good. It's, they're a really good unit, they score really well, they got some defensive characteristics, they kind of get in the way with size 2, like, I, Fenris Beast Pack, Bow Chosen, Stalkers, Trolls, this is a, like, the Blood is War Band, I, I kind of want to say would probably be the best War Band for Nords, like, it has a lot of things going for, and I do like it. So, we're getting to the Jarl, the Jarl of White War, and every time I say that, that's what I think. This guy, or actually this lady, because uh, Cassandra got the female Jarl. Uh, once again, I've already kind of talked about the supremacy ability of Surprise Attack. It didn't come up this game, and it's kind of just like... It, like, once it happens once to you, you're kind of aware of it, and it's kind of like... And that's why I kind of view that supremacy on the lower end, is because... If you can get a supremacy that's, like, efficient and something's happening every turn, you'll do really well with it. Like, Vanguard... Um, you'll always get work out of the best of men. You'll at least get work out of it on the unit the character's on. Uh, what is also another good one? Uh, the Dwag one, double cast. <laughs> Off the top of my head, uh, High Clone Executor. His, you know, draw three cards, really good. The Ferromancers give a big resolve bubble out. Also pretty good with, uh, Spires, because, you know, they, they tend to have a lower resolve unless the character's in that regiment, so... Bumping up all that resolve is really nice. So, yeah, if you can't get work out of it, it's kind of like a dead ability. And I'm very much in my war games, I like to cut the fat. So if there's anything that's not doing work, I kind of like, why aren't you doing work? Am I playing this wrong? Am I not getting anything out of it? Is there something else that I can use instead? What will be better? And I'll get some work out if I'm just not good enough to play it. Stuff like that. So in the Jarl's Warband, we got... Let's see here. There we go. Found it. <laughs> there's bear sharks in here? What the heck? Uh, two, two units of raiders, Uger, supposedly bear sharks. I, uh, I don't know if there was bear sharks, actually, because I think it might have just been another unit of raiders. So I'm a little confused, but I remember there was the... Unit of Raiders the Jarl was in, a unit of Raiders that I killed, another unit of Raiders. So unless Cassandra is proxying them, that's really it. I, I'm not really sure what was going on here. Um, or maybe they were forgotten? She had a Mountain Jotnar. So maybe the Bear Sharks were the Mountain Jotnar, so then that'd be 30 points open. Yeah, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that one, so maybe this is just an older variant, but eh, so... Let's just say Bear Sharks, Mountain Yotnar, Cassandra's playing like 30 points down. Not the end of the world. Uh, lastly, in our last warband, we got a Volva. You know, great spells. Ruins of Fate and Ruins of Shielding. So she gives Bastion to her Velks and she gives... Oh, what is it? Is it Tenacious? It's the one... It's the one where she... Oh, what is it? It's the one where you auto-pass a defense roll, I believe. And then I know she took the auto-pass and resolve one, so... Maybe that's where the other points went from the Bear Sharks to Mountain Jotnar. Just, you know, auto pass one resolve, auto pass one defense roll, you know, saving lives. Because um, it ends up being like saving three wounds, it's really nice. Uh, raiders, another unit of Raiders. Wait. And that's her list. Uh, I got no special rules to show you, so if you want, I don't know, grab the, grab the app and just look at them. <laughs> so with that, let's go on to our game. Here's the scenario we played today. We played Grind Them Down. Uh, you got a lot of, like, little objectives and the big objective in the middle. I do kind of like the spread. They're close enough where you can kind of hop from one objective to the other if you want to just, like, blitz across and kind of make that push. So I really like that about Grind Them Down. Um, this used to be a Hammer and Anvil style, uh, what is it, scenario? So you'd kind of fight on these ends. But since they've just done regular deployment, it still works and it's fine. I even messed up a game where we play, played it like this and it still worked and it was fine. For special rules, sweet. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. 
There you go. Yeah. So you got... Doo -doo -doo -doo. At the end of each supremacy phase, you choose a 6-inch objective that has no friendly regiments in range of it. The second player can choose the same if they want. And if you score it, so you can't have any friendlies in it, but if you move someone in it at the end of the turn, you score an additional 3 VPs. Every objective you seize, 1 VP. If you're controlling 2 or more, 2 VP. So you can kind of rack up a bunch of points if you're controlling like uh, 2 or 3 objectives, especially if you... Um, kind of like move on and off them to try and farm them so like i feel kind of the way to play this scenario is that you pick a side so we're gonna use the right side here so let's say you pick a side you run up you take this objective you push 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 take this objective swing this way and then draw a line right there and just kind of hold the middle so you know you're scoring three here and then you kind of throughout the game I'm just gonna use orange. You'll back this unit off, and then the next turn you'll put your friendly token, I'll use green, on this objective, and then you walk back onto it, scoring those additional three points, and then you also, on that same turn, back this unit off, and you know, you put your, object, your marker on this one, and then you, you know, go back in. So you just kind of like hot frog and then the rest of your army is literally forcing your opponent I guess to do the same and fight over the middle. So if they don't realize you're doing this and you've secured it early enough and then you can secure the um, the middle zone as well. We'll just use orange. You can just kind of rank up points and score that way and secure it. But you kind of need to push into your opponent's side of the table, swing and keep them away. So you're kind of probably going to be building... Mm, use black. Kind of like a bunker like this and you kind of need to capture that amount of the table and just hold it as long as possible while doing that little like on and off thing to score points uh that's really it i gotta say about this scenario so let's go on to the table here's the table red circles the objectives i'm not really going to circle them uh we got you know the water over here for the negative one clash uh, let's do that negative one c uh, that log in the middle, we just move out of the way. It's just there for um, to look nice. We have some obscuring, hindering, uh, weird patches of ground or forests. And then we got two size three big ass rocks kind of on the side. And then we got some size two hills. So your size increases by two if you're standing on those. Um, that's really the match. Does any of this really affect anything? We kind of skirt around a lot of this. I think the only one that really affected me for terrain is this guy right here because my opponent got a unit of raiders from like all the way back here into this ret like into a side of Merc crossbows at one point in the game and then I'm like well I gotta go get my Gilded Legion up here and I just kind of like run up and just be like alright guess you're getting charged to the side but you're also keeping me away from getting more up the table so it is working. Um, yeah, I don't, Abinami's like, eh, I don't mind the train, but I kind of wish it was, like, more in the middle. One, one of the things I really notice as this game kind of goes on is that I'm very much outnumbered by the amount of activations, and I'll use this color. No, I will use this color. Um, this basically being open board space, and so much of it, like, this is all open if you really want to fight over it. This is all open if you really want to fight over it. I'll use this purple. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, this is all open. Like, it's it's just a lot of open space. And my opponent takes great advantage of that. Because they have so much space to just put their stuff. And I'm kind of just getting swarmed. I can't really use terrain to keep stuff off me or position, like, that well. Uh, this size 3 building I'm circling in black on the right I kind of use that a bit to keep my opponent off me but that's really it and I'm just kind of get like swarmed and bogged down because the table is so open uh, it's usually what I normally play where there's like train in the middle and you know train separating the table and there's just more train I was just kind of like oh okay and as the game comes on like doesn't come on but as the game goes on I realize that and I'm like oh this is kind of bad for me <laughs> there's not there's not much train here but just limits just getting swarmed by naked bearded men <laughs> all right so let's go to turn one and find out how how bad the swarming is here's turn one uh things that i get on the table i get 
Moshe Bowman, two units of my crossbows, sweet. My opponent autos on a unit of Vanguard, or sorry, are they Vanguards? They're unit stalkers, I forget if they have flank base or like Vanguard base, I, I really forget. So they get their unit of stalkers on, bow chosen on, uh, raiders, I'll just circle the bow chosen stalkers. So you know, there's bow over there, stalkers over there at the blooded, um, raider, uh, lady Jarl raider, and I end up going first because I have less shit. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Oh, sorry, before I say that, we, you know, here's our, like, we choose these zones. You can't score them yet, but we're still just doing it to get into the habit. So I'm kind of like, well, Militia Bowman, you can kind of, I'm like looking at it. Well, I like the right side of the table a little more. Like I mentioned in the train thing, I got this rock. Um, you know, maybe I can kind of fight for that. So let's, let's kind of put some crossbows and stuff up there and start looking at it. Um, so I start running everything up. Militia, you know, up the table you go, kind of in the middle, um, leaving space so that you can just kind of keep blitzing and the Merc crossbows can kind of, uh, what is it, what do I want to say, they can kind of cover the bricks that are going to be aiming for this zone right here and this zone right here, because I'm a little bit off the top of my head, like, starting to look at that, like, this is kind of what I want to fight for, everything on, like, this side of the table. I do look over at this zone on the left and I'm like, oh, maybe I can go get it, but, like, we'll find out. Or maybe I have to defend it. We'll find out. Um, my opponent does a, like a wider spread. I believe they run up the Stalkers and Bocho, being really aggressive, kind of going for that middle. They run up both their Raiders, kind of coming up the side here, really pushing this flank. I'm like, oh, that's not really fun. And then and the last piece is like the Bochos and coming up this way, really projecting threat that way. And I hate dealing with Bochos and. Um, and the stalkers beside them so they, they can kind of like double shoot at stuff I'm going to admit to something. This is very much the game where I finally give uh, Range Nords respect because it is very good because they're volley three and they get a lot of shots and they can output very well um, doing a range trade into Nords is just kind of a bad idea unless you can just absolutely overwhelm them with shots. Um, so Spires, Long Distance Marksman clones, uh, VCI can probably do it. Uh, Dweg can probably do it just because they have the def like the defensive armor on Fireforge, Ballistas, Hellbringer Drake to just take the shots and live while dishing it out enough. Um, Old Dominion really doesn't have shooting, CC doesn't have shooting, who else am I missing? Wadroon, uh, Wadroon's kind of playing the monster mash, so I don't really, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen that matchup, like, Wadroon versus Nord shooting, but from, from my humble 100k player point of view, um, I need more than three units of my crossbows and a unit of Militia Bowman to kill that, and it, it really shows. So, that's kind of what's going on turn one, let's go look at turn two. Here's turn two. I get both my Militia and Theus Priest, boop, and my Noble Lord and the Household Guard, and this one unit of Household Knights onto the table. My opponent gets the Velks and the Volva. They get their other unit of Raiders and their Fenris Beast back. So things that kind of go first, I start moving up my uh, Work crossbows and militia bowmen first, because I want I need to generate room for the bricks of household guard and militia to get up the table. Uh, so with that, this unit of merc crossbows, I'm just gonna put a line right there. They just kind of one up, choo 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 choo, and they kill a stand of stalkers because the entire unit wasn't completely in the woods. So I get all my shots and I do it. I'm like sweet, doing really well, feeling really good. This is a bad sign, and it's gonna it's gonna show what's gonna happen in the future. Um. My opponent's like, I think they draw a couple characters, I draw a couple characters, um, we then have the other unit of militia, or not militia, uh, merc crossbows move up, and I check this, and this is, or not that one, this is just 18, and I, you know, get the shots in there, um, I think I do a point or two of damage, so that, you know, either confirms the stand, I notice, circle in blue, there's a dice back there, so I know there's a couple wounds on them. Uh, my militia just kind of shoot up the table. They just need to get in the way. And the reprisal is stalkers shoot into militia bowmen. Bow chosen kind of move up. Uh, they... But yeah, they shoot at merc crossbows. 
I believe they activate much later in the game, and by that point I've had the, uh, what is it, Household Guard and the Noble Lord up, so I'm getting that 6-inch bubble. Do an orange, so 6-inch bubble to the Merc Crossbows, Militia, to these Merc Crossbows, to this Militia. Like, really good positioning for that bubble, keeping guys safe, really like that. Um, and then I kind of get... What is it? My opponent kind of just starts running up stuff. You know, he's got these raiders over here. He's getting the zone to score it really good. Um, I run my militia up to get the Theus Priest in the zone, scoring it really good. And then I just have these Hustle Knights kind of doing a bank, like a kind of, you know, like a wheel. Get, get some, you know, maybe there's going to be a charge into them because I really want to get them into the zone to score it later on. Um, this is... Did I fuck this up? I think I fucked this up a little bit, where I should have put this token into that zone. Because I don't believe my Merc crossbows were there, but I forget about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just take that one. Like, no, you idiot. God. So I could have scored four points. My opponent does score four points. That's so really good on them. Bad on me. Gotta remember the scenario, <laughs> is what I'm saying. And then they just run up these raiders and this Venerous Beast back over here. They're looking to kind of come in and hit the side of me, kill those Merc Crossbows with Bow Chosen shooting, get into the Militia. It's going to be a lot in the Militia, and it's not going to be fun. Um, Household Guard and Militia are really looking to lock down this side of the table. And I'm already looking at my Gilded Legion positioning, and I'm kind of thinking between these Hustle Knights and the other brick and just getting all three bricks right beside each other. And I think that would have been a really strong spot. Except you'll see in a bit why this goes wrong. So that's kind of it. One point for me, four for my opponent. Let's go on turn three and find out why this Guild Legion brick kind of gets a little fucked over. Here it is. Uh, everything else is on the table. So Guild of Legion, there you are. Uh, other unit of Hustle Knights, there you are. My opponent gets their trolls. Mount Yotnar, no, I'll do some blue. Trolls, Mount Yotnar, and Uger. So everyone's on the table, everyone's doing stuff. So things that kind of happen first, I once again get the Merc crossbows. I'm kind of like shooting into stalkers, looking to try and get them. I just whiff all my shots and my opponent makes it. I there's uh, I'll show a picture at the end probably where... I rolled like 10 shots, got two hits, and my opponent say, I'm just like, oh my god, please. Like, you just took aim and shot. Like, what is going on? Um, my opponent, re Retaliation, this unit of Raiders, declares a charge, long bombs, gets it in, or even short bombs, but they get in, do a bunch of damage. I'm like, oh, that's really great. Kind of blocking up these Gilded Legion. Really good for my opponent. Um, what else is going on? My opponent has the stock, or not the stalkers, the Bocho. Actually, I believe the stalkers just kill off the militia. They're dead. I'll just put a little, like, box right here. They don't need to be really represented. Um, these Merc crossbows, I think Bow Chosen, what do they do? They shoot the Merc crossbows. They don't take aim, they just shoot. And they back up because my opponent is seeing me measure the Holy Fire range to try and get into those Bow Chosen because if Bow Chosen get Holy Fired, they'll kind of die except he's out threatening me so he can just shoot and scoot back and as you can see on the right there he's bringing up the raiders he's bringing up the fenrir like it's not really looking good in response i bring up my household knights to kind of cover the malicious flank right there because i really need them not to be attacked by stuff and it's kind of that oh this is really sucky there's a lot of stuff going on i don't they're using their shooting really well to kind of draw me forward um not getting a ton out of my Merc crossbows, and my militia is kind of slowing me down. Oh, my other unit of Merc crossbows also auto comes on this turn, so I'm kind of like... The right side... I'll just circle this in yellow, so like... This side of the table is getting really crunched. Where am I going to put those Merc crossbows? I'm like, eh... I'll put the Merc crossbows over here, because the Guild Legion are last. Retrospect, I probably should have put the Merc crossbows right here. That would have been a better spot for them. Could have got some more stuff done. Bad on me. Uh, Household Knights, they just kind of run into the zone. Score four points. Sweet. Uh, my opponent gets the Velks just towing the zone. Sweet. I, for myself, I just 
fucking ram a ton of household guard up there. Sweet, so I'm scoring that zone. And I'm scoring the zone with the Theus Priest. The rest of my opponent, you know, he's just running up the Uger because he's looking at the household guard. That's a good spot for the Uger to kind of get in work. So he's going to try and hammer and anvil me with the Velks and the Uger, getting around the Stalkers, Trolls. He's kind of seeing a lot of my range stuff is dead, and my only range stuff is over here on the left. So trolls are going to start kind of running through stuff and make their way over there. Um, Jarl with raiders, they can just sit in that zone and score it. Mount Jotnar, uh, counter deploys from the Gilded Legion. Gilded Legion goes right here, you know, is going to fight those raiders, kill them all. But it is going to slow them down, and that's what my opponent needs. My opponent needs to control me, and they're actually doing that really well right now. I'm kind of getting kind of bogged and pinned between just the sheer amount of stuff my opponent has. Um... But that's really it for turn three. I score a bunch of points. I think I get four plus three is seven plus another two is nine. Am I right? One, two, three. No. Hold on. I'm messing it up. Four plus two is six plus another two is eight. I get eight points. There we go. Okay. So doing really well. My opponent only scores one. But I am very worried right now because my opponent is bringing a lot of force towards me. And I'm not handling it very well. So let's go on to turn four. Here's turn four. Uh, things that go on. My... Doo -doo -doo -doo, I believe I activate the Guild Legion first. Just charge in. I don't get Inspire because I'm in the Hindering Train. Kill the Raiders. Sweet. Opening that up. Cool. Uh, my opponent gets the Velks into the Household Guard. Uh kills a stand or two back here i'm super not like i'm not super worried but it's still kind of annoying uh, i get the merc crossbow unit right here you know out of the way get out of there you need to move because the guild agent need to come for those uh valkyries and kill them all my opponent kind of makes a bit of a blunder just putting his mountain yotnar there or her mountain yotnar there and i uh i'm like yeah, you're stuck. Like, you can't hop the Velks right now. They're engaged, so you can't move through them. And also, I don't believe... You maybe couldn't have got that close right here. I'm not 100% sure, but... They could have just easily moved to here, gotten in this open position, and been fine. On the left, Merc Crossbows get into range. Shoot at Raiders. Don't really do much, because dice hate me. Um, that, That's... It, you know, it sounds like a cop out, but it it's totally true. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. You're you'll see something magical in the next couple turns. Uh, left side hustle knights, you know, score the zone, diddle around, move around a bit. My opponent, you know, going for that troll block, shoots over, raiders backing up, still scoring, doing the right thing. Uh, stalkers, I believe they back up. I think they take aim, shoot, and with fire and advance back up. Allowing the Uger to get a march charge. Like they march to about here. And they're landing on the raiders. But it's not the end of their activation. So then they charge and get in the side. Do a little bit of damage. Nothing too crazy. Um, Noble Lord and the Hustle Guard. They you know. Uh, clash into Velks. Do a little bit of damage. I think I kill a standoff. In the back. And then I declare a duel. Then my opponent rallies. So you know. Getting rid of these guys slowly. Working on it. Um, another thing that happens is over here. I, it's really weird. So on the right side, I'm kind of like, well, what, what do I do? I'm, I got this unit of household knights. I can, I want to not get hit by Fenrir because they'll do work. And I kind of just end up like going right here to protect the flank. Um, Theus Priest shoots off a holy fire. Loose formation, uh, Fenris survive. And I'm like, that's wonderful. Fenrir, charge into Household Knights, Bow Chosen, shoot Household Knights, kills off them all. Fenrir, like, reform, Raiders getting in, so now it's like, okay, Militia, you now have to fight Bow Chosen, Raiders, and Fenrir. If the Theus Priest magic works, I'll have a good time. If it doesn't, I'm going to have a very bad time, because I'm starting to kind of win the right side. Um, the left side is lost, and I really should just give up on it. Maybe I should just run my stuff, like, more in the way, and or, like, also Knights commit this way, but I am still scoring one, two, three, 
and my opponent is scoring uh, just the one over here. So, you know, getting up on points, looking at it, trying to hold it off, but the lines have engaged, my opponent has a lot of stuff, I'm, I really gotta protect my sides, I don't want to get the surprise attack off, uh, it's not the greatest, so, you know, it's kind of like, what am I gonna do here, I need to, I need to kind of start recovering. So next turn I believe is turn 5, and I think it's the last time you'll ever see uh, these green dice. <laughs> and I'll talk about why. Here's turn 5. Yep, there, there they are. Pink dice. And we'll get on to that story in a moment. <laughs> so things that happen first. Uh, I believe I win the roll off, Gilded Legion, uh, charge in, fight the uh, Volva and her unit, um, do some damage, uh, Household Guard, you know, Inspire Clash, do some damage, you know, I finally got both these in, they bless off a bunch of attacks, but now they're going to be taking, uh, what is it, two regiments at the same time, and that's kind of the overload of bless, they can only bless off one thing, so I'm really looking to try and overload it, do a ton of damage, break in Shadow's regiment, and go on. Uh, a thing that I'm doing, actually, is that the Noble Lord can duel and most likely kill the Volva, so I'm just declaring duels on the Volva over and over again, and my opponent is declining them because they don't want to die. Um, they don't want to lose that Bastion, they don't want to lose the Tenacious and the Indomitable, and the heals, and so I'm just breaking them still so that they're at their lowest resolve, and they can't heal themselves. So that's kind of like my game plan in that middle. I have a million stands there, so I am for sure scoring this. Um, this unit of Murkross was right here. Uh, shot is just reforming and just shooting into this Mount Yonar. I'm slowly killing it, but I'm never going to kill it. Um, things that happen on the right side, because things have changed. Uh, Fenris Peace Pack. Charge in. You know, they're kind of up there. Uh, do some damage. Militia. Clash back. Kill them all. Raider. Or, um, my opponent, I think, bow chose and shoots me. And I'm like, uh, take some damage. Theus Priest. Uh, roll six dice. They fail all of them. Focus for a reroll. Fails those two, and I fail all six of my dice with a focus reroll, and I'm like, yeah, these dice can burn. And I just pick up my dice, walk to the trash, dump them, go buy new dice, because I was like, I am so done. Um, what allows this unit of raiders to live? 8 to 12 holy fires probably would have, like, nuked them into the ground, done enough damage, either their uh, counter would have been very little or dead. That's what I was really hoping for. Dice or dice, shit happens. Kind of got fed up when it got smaller dice. <laughs> Best way to put it. Uh, I believe Stalker's here to shoot at Household Guard. That's really it there. I am still controlling the zone on the right, though. And now it's kind of like... Kill... Like, uh, having those raiders still live kind of throws a massive wrench. Because if the raiders are dead on the right side, I can kind of run the militia into the zone, try and go for bow chosen, cast more holy fires, chase them down, and you know, kind of win that flank and start the the bounce back and forth with militia of these two zones to kind of score points, secure that, guild of legion and household guard kill the Velks in the next couple turns, household guards if there's any left, you know, are probably going to go fight these stalkers and kill them. And then Gilded Legion literally just rotates and sets the line of engagement right here. And I've achieved the goal of the theory of this scenario and how to win it. However, it really sucks that the magic dice were like, no, you don't, you're not Dwag, you don't get to cast spells. And I'm like, oh, please. So just a thing what happens. It sucks, but you know. Maybe it shouldn't have came down to that for like. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, on the left side, opponent with raiders, still scoring. Cool. Uh, trolls running up the table. Cool. Mount Yotnar, I believe, just march charges. He, like, shimmies over a bit and then charges into these household knights. Household knights, as you can see, kind of set up to counter the trolls because I thought the trolls were going to go into the merc crossbows and, you know, the household knights can kind of swing around and try and deal with the trolls. Merc crossbows, shoot trolls, I think this troll over here is down to one life, but he's going to regen it next turn and be fine, and I'm going to lose the entire left side. 
I've accepted that, but I've kind of stalled and made my opponent work for it. Uh, my opponent scores this, we both score four points. Uh, actually, no. They score four plus another three for controlling two and the other one, so they score... Doo -doo -doo. Why am I, like... Seven? Four, two, yeah, one. So they score seven to my four. Kind of sucks, but I'm like... I, you know, I'm, I was scoring early, you know, let's kind of, let's kind of keep it going. We, we might have a way to get out of this, but, uh, it's been a really hard fought battle and a lot of stuff has not been going my way because I've been making stupid moves. So let's go to turn, I believe six and find out if I kind of recuperate some of these stupid moves. Here we go. So things that go well, things that go bad, things that go well, start with that. Gilded Legion, Household Guard, kill the Valk unit. Sweet. We've locked down and scored in the zone. Double sweet. Household Guard, after their kill, run over and engage the Stalkers. Alright, cool. Stalkers clash back, do a bunch of damage, not so cool. Uh, Bow Chosen Reform, shoot into Household Guard, not cool. Uh, losing those Household like not necessarily losing the Household Guard, but... I need the Gilded Legion to kind of cover the left side, but I need to also get rid of the Stalkers, get rid of the Bocho, get rid of the Raiders. That's where we're kind of at, and right now I'm really not doing well with that because, as you can see on the right, Theus Priest, Militia, maybe I cast another Holy Fire, I don't know. Got the Raiders down to just one stand over here, and I'm just kind of like, uh, I need I need you gone because if I, like, if you died, I could have got the Militia into Bow Chosen, like, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple thoughts right there, and it's just, it's just really rough. However... Um, I might have rallied. Yeah, I think I had the Theus Priest go try and blow up the Raiders. Rolled better, but not enough. Or my opponent saved a bunch. It's fine. Raiders clap back. Militia rallied intact, so they're kind of like that. However, because I'm rallied, still have stands in the zone, still score in. Sweet. Uh, my opponent scores both these. Um, they're stuck in a fight with this one unit of Household Knights. Sweet. Uh, my Merc Crossbows, still shooting that giant. Household Knight, still fighting that giant. Uh, Merc Crossbows pulled up the daggers and started stabbing the trolls. Trolls just march charge to get in to make me stop shooting because the regen, they're just gonna out-regen me and I'm gonna die. Ugh. But... This game is leaning very much towards my opponent who's playing Nords. I'm kinda wavering at this point, so... If I can lock down that right side, I can I can do this, but it's it's not looking good. Like I'm hoping for that dice going my way, and that's not a really good hope for in a war game. But we both score four, and we go on to turn. Oh, I want to say seven. Let's go look at that. Here's turn seven. Uh, Raiders over here kill the Theus Priest and the Militia. That really sucks. Stalkers. Household Guard, Household Guard Clash, kill the Stalkers, Blooded kills off the Household Guard, both implode and die, sweet. Uh, Gilded Legion basically do the biggest wheel in the world to go here, to threaten these Bochos. Bochos and walk up to keep me out of the zone, as you can see, and shoot into the Gilded, yay. Um, Merc Crossbows here, still shoot the Jotnar, Probably a bad move, probably should have reformed and shot into the raiders instead. Didn't do that. Was like, I guess she'll do, like, harass the mountain unit. No, just kill off the raiders, or, so, yeah, the raiders. There are only, like, four wounds left. I could have probably done it. Uh, Hellsel Knight lives. My opponent, like, whiffed a bunch of attacks, and I rolled really well and lives. Still here. However, my opponent is still scoring these two zones, getting four points. I'm scoring this zone, getting one point. My opponent's catching up now. Trolls. Kills off Merc Crossbows, really good. They just inspire Clash, my opponent's in a really good spot. They can take the time. And we can kind of tell like the game's kind of done, but we play out another turn. So let's go turn, I believe, eight, and see if I kind of get anything else done. Here's turn eight. As you can see on the left, Trolls just reform. Uh, Mount Yotnar inspires Clashes, kills off this last Household Knight. Uh, Merc crossbows finally get their shit together and shoot into the raiders. Raiders are like, we're evasion 2, we don't care. We're not evasion 2, they're evasion 1, they don't care, and they live. Um, 
Gilded Legion charge into Bow Chosen. Bow Chosen get ripped apart and die. Raiders reform and charge into the side of the Gilded Legion to kind of stall them so they, I can't get into the zone. And at this point, I believe it's 9 o'clock and the game is called. And it's called in my opponent's favor. So my opponent wins. And it's very obvious once I show you the score. Here's the score. Uh, ended on turn 8. I have 22 to my opponent's 28. I'll just... It's a snowman. 20... Oh, that's a terrible 2. 22. So what I gotta say about this game. I realized a couple things... Uh, as the game went on, I was, I will admit I was sour at this game because I was just like getting the shit kicked out of me. Um, Cassandra played really well, understood what she needed to do to win, used her forces really well. Uh, there wasn't like too many big mistakes on her end because um, she had so many regiments she could kind of... Um, I don't want to. I don't want to make this sound like I'm taking stuff away from her. I'm. I'm really not. But like, you can. You can play a little more relaxed because you have so many threats projecting onto your opponent that it's like any move your opponent makes, you have something that covers it. So you can kind of play a little bit more relaxed. Um, the only like blunder I would call it off the top of my head is the Mount Unard kind of getting stuck behind Valks for a little bit. But like, that's not really huge just because of the the sheer amount of threats. On my end, I really gotta stop getting into a shooting war with people who shoot better than me. <laughs> there are so many factions that shoot better than 100 Kingdoms, Dweg, uh, Nords, Spires, like just, I gotta stop. And instead I gotta just kinda, I feel I should've, instead of moving my regiments 15 inches up the table, I should've just moved them 10 and been like, come at me, I'm gonna really focus on the uh, right side of the table, I want your shooting regiments to come closer, and I'm just going to kind of stall out, but that's really poor because Nords wants to get on to the scenario early and often to try and outscore their opponent because they don't have very much survivability. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a bit of a catch-22. You kind of slow your play down, uh, don't get super aggressive, vie for positioning, and Nords just kind of runs over and takes scenario. Or you get aggressive with Nords and they just shoot you up and get into really good positions to favorably peace trade until they win. And my opponent did that really well. So good on them. Um, there, there's a couple there. Uh, I, I had a good, I think, idea overall. I just need to keep my range units safer. Um, I could have waited more until I got all three bricks on the table to start really like pushing the engagement line. And... That Raider unit that got into the side of crossbow slowed down the Gilded Legion because then I would add a turn early of Gilded Legion Household Guard into the Velks. So that would have been much better for me because things would have been around longer or had more health so that they could do other stuff. Um, Bow Chosen getting away from the Holy Fire, Holy Fire not going off on the Raiders, Loose Formation on the Fenris with Holy Fire. It was like... Wow, today you want to cast magic spell? No, it's just like, oh my god. Um, I like the Theus Priest because he can do a lot of stuff at every point of the game. I dislike wizards because I just I just roll bad, and that's just me. Um, even rolled so bad so many times this game that I was just like, I'm just picking up my dice and trash and them. I couldn't be bothered. I just went and bought new dice. <laughs> it's just so done. I was so done with like, I'm like, okay, something's up. I, I should be rolling like 10 shots, volley three, five of these should hit. I get two, I get one. I'm like, come on. I'm, I'm just, I'm just tired of seeing it. And you know, it's the, it's the dice superstition and I fall for it too. And I'm just like, ah, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to get new dice. Maybe I'll feel better. Cause if I, if I feel better, I'll pay better. Cause I think I'm good, but I'm not. Uh, so yeah, win, win for Nords and Cassandra really good on her. Uh, her game's improved quite a bit. Uh, we were talking about it, and she's kind of moving towards Nords right now. And she does like it because she doesn't have to, like, worry about the chance stacking or anything like that. Like, that mini game of getting all your chance in the right order so you can pop off really well. Um, and this really lets her just kind of play the game and just swarm people with uh, naked bearded men. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So, if you enjoyed the Bower Report, uh, there's a couple others on the YouTube channel. Um, Bonk Table also has a Discord. You can find that in the description below. We got a podcast. You can listen to Cassandra and I chat about Conquest. And uh, our latest one is where we went and got a bunch of other content creators who are on the Bonk Table Discord. And we brought them all into uh, one big call and was like, let's talk about Conquest in the year of 2023. So. That was a really fun one, and I enjoyed it quite a lot, so I kind of, you know, hey, let's check out the other content creators and all of us chatting and see if you like any of them. But with that, I hope everyone has a great day. Bye!